And yeah, this is something that we've never made before on Stream Palooza, and it is a dish that I quite enjoy eating in the summertime. I've not had it in a while as well. It is traditional French, we can say, with maybe a bit of American influence or inspiration there. We'll go over the history of the dish, everything like that in a little bit. Hi, Gavino, welcome back. And yeah, we're making homemade chippies today, so that's going to be so delish. So here's the menu. So a steak tartare, so hand-chopped beef tenderloin. So we bought a whole tenderloin. We'll have to clean that up first. Chop it up really nice and fine so that it's like nice to eat on the palate. And then there is a homemade aioli or a mayo, we can say. There's a recipe for that on what we have linked today. So I'll pop that up really quick as well. Just one recipe, super simple. And then it gets pickles, some shallots, and then, like I said, some homemade potato chips. And then you can decide whether you want to garnish the tartare with a raw egg yolk or not. I mean, if we're going to make aioli today, I don't know if we need the yolk, right? Not sure if we're going to need to yolk it up. But yeah, not a lot of cooking today other than like the potato chips, I would say. Let me look up real quick just an article on this. Okie dokes. So let's get into it. Steak tartare. This is a meat dish made from raw, I don't want to say ground beef because you absolutely do not make this dish with ground beef from the store. Okay, let's get that over with right now. Never can be a thing. Please don't do that and think that you're going to like cheat and skip ahead a step. The reason for this, guys, is we don't know what is in the ground beef from the store. It's from many different cuts of an animal, so it's not going to be super nice to eat on the palate, which is why you usually only use one specific muscle from the cow for this. And then, yeah, you have the risk of so much cross-contamination that you'll probably get sick off of the tartare if you use ground beef from the store for this. So please do not do this, okay? First thing to get right out right off the bat crack a quail egg on top yeah not for necessity but for decadence it's true that'd be so nice palooza hi fcb how are you doing okay so just hand chopped meat and then we can say get in a bit more into this is this was traditionally made with horse meat we're not doing that today right it's a bit hard to source horse meat right now in some parts of the world but traditionally that's what it was made with and we will find out why in a sec here so this is usually served with onions capers pepper worcestershire sauce and other seasonings often presented to the diner separately so that you can kind of doctor up your own dish later on it's often served with a raw egg yolk on top of the dish which kind of lends a little bit of a saucy sort of feel to mix in with that. I mean, if you can't be weird about the raw egg yolk if you're eating the raw beef, right? <laughs> so the tartars and raw meat, here's the history. So a popular character of Mongol warriors called tartars had them tenderizing meat under the horse saddle and then eating it raw. So they would take a cut of the horse meat, literally put it under the saddle so that like as they rode on their horse, they would be tenderizing that piece. And then if you've ever tried to eat some cuts of raw beef or meat for that matter, it can be very chewy if it's not done right if it's not chopped up fine, right? So that's why they tenderized it first and then they would still eat it raw. So Mongol warriors. Isn't that cool? Doing great today, FCB. Halfway through quarantine number five. Crazy. 
Yeah, Sammy's kind of quarantining himself right now, too. He went for his COVID test this morning, nice and early. And it says he's already got one email back. It says the test needed additional looking at. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Okay, and then popularization of raw meat in Europe and the United States. So in the late 19th century, the Hamburg steak, so like the burger based out of Germany, became popular on the menus of many restaurants in the port of New York. This kind of filet was beef minced by hand, lightly salted, often smoked, and usually served raw in a dish along with onions and breadcrumbs. Whoa. That's an interesting, like, first rendition of a burger, hey? Is you just smoke the outside and then the inside is still raw? Interesting. Hamburg steak gained popularity because of the ease of preparation and decreasing cost of the ground meat. And then origins of the name in the early 20th century what is now generally known as steak tartare was in Europe called steak a l'American. <laughs> I thought it went, would have went the other way. One variation of the dish included serving it with tartar sauce, which I think would be like maybe okay. Also possibly kind of weird. Okay, so now we know the history of the dish, which is pretty cool, hey? Very thoughtful of those Mongol warriors to tenderize the meat under the saddle that they're riding on. I love that. Really, FCB, when you were in the Netherlands, you actually got steak tartare tartar if you ordered a hamburger. Interesting. Did you enjoy it? I did not have that experience in Netherlands, but that would make sense. So the recipe I linked today is Baltazar's steak tartare recipe, which is a restaurant. I'm actually not sure where. It might be in New York. We'll see. So they say, I know the first ingredient in this recipe is filet mignon, which may sound like a punishment for your pockets. It is like one of the more expensive cuts of beef. But think of it this way. Steak tartare is something most of us only eat at restaurants. It's true. That's the only times that I've had it. This dish is an opportunity to turn yourself into a real restaurant chef as you make two things you have probably never made at home before, mayonnaise and steak tartare. If your pantry is stocked like a well-equipped arsenal, this recipe should be a cinch without much added expense or time. Plus, there's no cooking. We're doing potato chips today, so yes, there is a bit of cooking, but that's that's on us. It was punishment for your pocket, Sammy. Yeah, like a hundred over over a hundred dollars for the piece. So if the filet mignon is prohibitive, ask your butcher for what he recommends. Just be sure to tell him you're eating it raw. So what that means is if you can't find beef tenderloin or filet mignon, ask the butcher what's the next best option for you. So they say at the Baltazar restaurant, the small portion of steak tartare sells for $15 and the large one for 21 plus tax and tip per order. They say this recipe today serves six to eight. One quarter pound filet mignon, very cold. I guess that is quite a bit. We'll dial it back just a touch. Just a touch. I don't want to make that much. And they say even with the filet, that's stretching a buck. Plus, you get to feel like you're in Paris for the night without paying Air France the price of 30 large Baltazar steak tartars. <laughs> yeah, it's six to eight tablespoons, we can say. Probably a loser. Okay, you're in a small diner, FCB. Not a restaurant, and you only saw it once. 
Okay, so recipe facts. This is wrong. Total time is zero minutes today. That's obviously not accurate. Someone messed that up. Like we said, it serves six to eight. So ingredients that we will need. Just looking it over real quick before we start. Obviously the filet mignon. I do switch out shallot instead of onion for this just because I like the flavor of the shallot more. Capers, cornichons, parsley, anchovy, olive oil, garlic, salt, pepper. We're going to make our own tartare mayonnaise. They served theirs with baguette, but I like making potato chips with it. We can learn something new today. And then the egg yolks, Dijon mustard, lemon, sherry, Worcestershire, Tabasco, salt, grapeseed oil, olive oil. I think those are the mayo recipe. I think that's for all the mayo, those ingredients. If you got tartare instead of a burger, I might be confused, but probably not mad. It's true, right? <laughs> be like, oh, I guess this is okay too. <laughs> Okay, I got my list here. So a few things that we'll have to do today. The beef. We'll probably work kind of back and forth with the beef between the freezer, just so we get it chopped really nice. So first we'll have to clean the whole tenderloin. Clean, and then maybe we can get some nice thin slices off of that to start. And then those slices will stack up together, seal them back up together into the freezer. And then once that's a little bit more firm, then we'll come back through, slice through again. Then we'll get our nice meat strips, put that back in the freezer for a little bit until it's firm. And then we can go back across the other way and get the really nice fine diced cubes. That should be satisfying. And we do wanna make sure that as we're working with the raw beef, we keep it as cold as possible, right? So slice, slice and freeze, we'll say. We'll do that two times. Slice and freeze. And then the final dice, we can say. And then potato chips. What's involved in that will be first slicing them nice little round so slice your potato and we're gonna soak it in a nice cold water that's going to draw out some of the residual starches and give us a perfectly crisp potato later on when we go to fry it so that's a really helpful step i wouldn't skip that minimum 30 minutes in the water uh up to overnight i've even done in some restaurants for chippies Prep all your potato chippers the day before, put them in the water so that you can come in in the morning, drain them, make your fresh chips for the day. Blondie, what up my fellow foodies? How is your Sunday going? Welcome in, sir. Okay, so slice, soak, and then it'll just be a fry. So oil at, we can say probably 350 to 375 Fahrenheit. And then fry and season, we can say. You always want to season anything that comes right out of the deep fryer just to cut through that residual fat and oil. Hey, Eric, welcome in. How are you feeling today, dude? The pepper man, pepper madness yesterday at your spot. Okay, beef, potato, our mayo we'll put down. And then the other little pickly things what shallot caper cornichon and parsley for garnish that's pretty simple slept good last night all the work in the kitchen yeah you did good one that's good to hear all right let's get into it friendos we'll post up our cutting board here first For the tenderloin, just gonna give it a little wipe with the cloth. I don't like how that 
was looking. Keeps like picking up these little stains. It's bugging. Bugging me. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the tenderloin and then we'll get into this. Got my bone and knife here. We'll put the steel as well. We'll start with that. Then away we go. It's gonna be a warm one today too. And I don't even know if this will fit on the the board. Barely. Barely. I think I'll just put a sheet pan under it. Just for the overhang. That works okay. I don't know why I thought the pan was going to be bigger than the board. Check it out. Beef tenderloin hole. 2.6 kilos. $118. Oh, do you like beef? I literally said the word and Doggo's like right here. Yeah, get on your chair. Get on your chair. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is this. And then I think I'm just gonna go for a really quick bathroom break right now. I don't know why this coffee is hidden like this, but might as well just get it over with. So good morning, White Dove. I'll be right back. Sorry, hold tight. <laughs> Okay, I've returned. First thing, hi Greek, how are you? Wipe this, just popped it on the steel. And then I'll try and keep most of the juices in the bag when we take this out. Which means I should probably do it this way. Cause that's the fatter side. You're a bit late, oh, we've not done anything yet, Greek. We just kind of went over what's going down today and then I had a sneaky bathroom break already. <laughs> Gently open that, oh, I already got juices on the board. Hurry. Wipe it up. No, we got like back-to-back -back beef days today. Did you have a good rest of your day, Greek, yesterday? I think I'm just gonna use this hand to sneak it out of here. This is 
a really long piece. <laughs> okay, BRB, we really juiced it up. Hey, Domin, yeah, I just ate and now I'm getting hungry again. Quick rinse -roo. There is some stuff to clean off of this. I'm gonna get a little bowl for all the trimmies. Took your son off roading? Like just in your truck? What's happening? Okay, we got the trimble there ready to go. And I think we should just get started. You can see all of this silver skin that needs to get cleaned off, all of this connective tissue. Pay a little bit less to get it done this way for you compared to if you get it completely clean because that's also an option. But we got the time today and we're also here to learn together. So this is why we chose this one. I'm just going to start by sliding our knife under. And from my experience, tenderloin is quite easy to clean and quick because the meat is really nice and soft. So all of the connective bits come off quite easily, as you can see. And since we're eating this raw, we really don't want any connective tissue on it, right? Cause that'd just be so chewy. This is like an extra sort of muscle on the side here. If we turn it over and look at it, you can kind of see where it separates off here like that. You literally just peel it off and apart. Crazy. Big tires and lifted on the truck, Greek. Sweet. And then we're also trying to be kind of gentle and not nick into the nice pristine meat too. That's why we kind of follow these lines that are naturally there in the muscle. Just gonna go like this now. All the way across. And that's like all good usable stuff, just it needs a bit extra cleaning. Try and sneak under that part too. <laughs> Welcome back, the fatty. It looks good, hey? I'm so excited for this today. stuff allowed. There we go. I'm going to start working down this way. I was mostly just like fat you can see how I can just peel it off so soft it's looking good already though hey never realized how satisfying it is to watch this domin hey I'm happy you stopped by 
Yeah, we often do meat cleaning like this on our stream. Kind of all different cuts all the time. And I'll kind of open this part up just to see what we're working with here. Yeah, you can see how like a butcher's job is quite satisfying. Tenderloin is really nice to work with too. <laughs> I think that's also part of it, Greek, because I may or may not make it look really easy. Okay, so this part as well. Look at this, how this is separating off of the muscle. That's going to come off too. I know Sammy's watching, right? I think I'm doing a good job. I usually have his help when I'm doing this. Yeah, we can see that whole line can come off here. Just separated all of it. That was way too easy. Now just like gently, like I'm literally just running the knife over this with no pressure to get it separated. And then at one point, now we can see through the other side where the two muscles separate. So we can do that. Good evening, Barracuda. How are you? We've missed ya. And then that part kind of tapers off there, as we can see. Does this separate too? must. That's why that's separating that way. And then that keeps kind of opening up. You can see just how nice the tenderloin meat though is very soft and supple. Okay, so main parts have been trimmed off. I'm just gonna put those in the bowl right now. I can clean that after stream. Just wanna show you guys what we're looking for as far as pieces from the muscle today. So this is where we are originally working. And like, this is basically how most people will buy their beef tenderloin is in this package. As it's been already pre-cleaned for them. But you can see just how much gets cleaned off, right? Hey, Blue Blue. How's Sammy feeling? So he went for his COVID test early today. And like less congested than yesterday, which is really good. Still has a bit of a cough though. But yeah, he said like felt way better today waking up than yesterday. So hopefully he's a-okay. Oh, was I doing like scalp cam? Sorry, Greek. Isn't tartare just raw? It is, that's why we gotta go quick. But you can't just use ground beef. This is what we went over earlier on stream. You can't just be like, yeah, I want some tartare in my life. I'm just going to buy a pack of ground beef and mix it up for myself at home. That's how you get insanely ill. Insanely ill. I would never recommend that. That's what I was thinking too. It's just like a little bit of too much extra stress. Needed a good sleep, stuff like that, Greek. Let's hope so, right? I just kind of keep turning this as we're cleaning. So now here we can see 
where this was kind of connected to some bones. You can see one, two, three, like all along. So that gets cleaned off as well. And then as well, if you're gonna be eating this raw, it's not wise to have a lot of fat in beef tartare because just the raw beef fat is very different on your palate compared to when it's warm. Where do you source your beef for beef tartare? It is supposed to be strictly from beef tenderloin Greek. Yeah, deer hunting. Venison tartare has got to be good, Zink. Oh, I think that backside was maybe supposed to come off too. That's fine. I think we'll be cutting steaks out of that anyways. So now, because of how beef fat is quite hard, we'll just slide our knife along that. That's some nice marble in there. Never really seen that on a tenderloin before. So far, I've not felt any connective tissue in here yet either. It's just a little bit of fat. You can kind of see how it's flapped up too. That's what I'm trimming off just to even it out. Don't worry, most of this is not going to go in the garbage. It'll probably go for the doggo food, aka spoiled. Okay. A little bit more here, which I can probably just peel. Never tried venison tartare? Uh, this one, this beef tenderloin, we picked up the whole piece from Costco. It's $118 for this whole piece. And yeah, it's a Canada AAA grading. So nice, nice grading, right? All right. That part I'm not gonna trim up anymore. So you can see like the main usable part here is really the center of this. And then everything else kind of tapers off from there. I think we can get away. I mean, this side seems a bit more lean. So if we cut some slices from this side and then as we get closer here, we'll be cutting steaks from the rest of it. Yeah, doggo tartare. And hi, Uncle Stinky, how are you? Yeah, the middle, like this we can say would be the Chateau Briand. Exactly, Barracuda. That's money. That's the money piece. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it from like here, I think. Just go boop. See, the flies are already bugging, so we gotta go quick. That's pretty amazing looking. It's more light on the matter here. So pretty good marbling, I would say even. If I hold that up, that would roast beautifully in the oven. Use all lean and chop some brisket fat? Yes. Okay, so now, do, do, do. I don't think this is the best knife to get some clean slices. I'm gonna try and use my chef's knife. And if that doesn't work very nice, then I'm gonna go grab a slicer knife and use that. But I have to say this feels pretty firm on its own. So it should be okay. Let's aim for a quarter inch thick. Try 
try and slice it nice and even. So that might happen and that's okay. And all we're gonna do is kind of stack these little slices up on top of each other and then we'll pop them in the freezer so it firms up. gonna be really good saw a recipe for smoked tartare it looked all wrong brown exterior being chopped into it that would probably be something that i would like cold smoke right that's interesting or if you wanted like the bark maybe garnish with it let me let me try this knife See how it feels. Okay, this is actually better, I think, than my chef's knife. Look at how nicely that sliced through. And well, you don't know unless you try your different knives that you have. And I mean, you'll always get a nicer mouthfeel the finer you're able to slice and chop this. So that's another thing to remember. You have a similar cutting board green thing, except it has green on the the little silicone edges instead of blue. I think these were from Amazon, the little set. Wasn't really a bark, just a short smoke. Pan in the oven. I'm confused, Paloozer. There evened it back out. I'm salivating already. And so I think after this, we'll prep our potatoes so that they can get soaking. And we'll probably work into making the aioli or mayo after that, in between the steps of us getting the beef prepped. Yeah, just using a smoke gun, exactly. That would be probably way better. Love the... The marbling in this one side here, that's really beautiful for a tenderloin. Happy cow. We'll do a couple more pieces and then that will be it. We're only going to make like one portion of this today. Especially since Sammy's not feeling the best. Okay, one more slice. And that will be good. Because, yeah, once we cut this up, it'll kind of expand in size too. But if we look at this, that's like a... That would be a solid steak. If we cut a steak from this, right? Okay, so it looks like... I mean, you can probably get four steaks from the rest of this. Once you get down to this point, it doesn't get as nice. But let's try and cut some nice thick pieces from the rest here. Just gonna trim up this one edge. Just stick that onto there. Roasted a loin like this years ago for Christmas and it was a huge hit, the Chateaubriand. It's so good, Eric. And it's quite simple, right? Doesn't need a lot of preparation. Something like that will be really good. Little baseball steak. Try and cut it as even as you can. Look at that.
circle a bit thicker as we taper off here. This one will be for sure a baseball. Go like there, as close as we can. Sweet. And then the rest of that I'll take care of. But yeah, like even this just roasting whole like that, just clean this off, would be really yummy. That would cook up real nice. Well, oh, there's a lot of stuff there, hey? Lots of little connective bitlies in the bottom of that muscle. Just kind of angle your knife and just trim all of that. Cool. Lots of usable stuff. Okay. I am going to just pop these onto or into a container, let's say. Because we'll be cooking those up, I think, coming up this week on our days off. Might as well, instead of putting them into the freezer. Can I even get into this Cambro? Lukey Bears, you can't get past the idea of Eden raw steak, no? How come? Have you tried it? I'll have to ask that. So now we'll kind of stick these together in here like that, just so we minimize any air circulation, right? Because that'll stay more fresh. And then like I said, the rest of this, I will just take care of after stream. It will be a bit of a process for sure. But there's lots of good usable stuff, so definitely do not throw it out. Pop the lid on that nice and tight. And then all I'm going to do with our little tartare portion, just pop that in this little container because it'll kind of keep the shape too. Pack it down as well. And then this is going to go into the freezer for like, let's say a good half an hour is a good starting place to check it. And it'll firm up. Then we can go through and slice it. And I'll just hold on to, or we can use a smaller cutting board from here on out, let's say. So a quick little wash up and then we'll put all of this away. Keep it fresh in the fridge slash freezer. Yeah, I mean, I was someone who grew up not even almost being able to touch raw meat. I was so weird about that. So now being able to even like butcher and eat raw meat, that's that's a pretty big accomplishment. Just goes to show how your palate can change over the years too. My favorite where to, way to prepare steaks. A uh, simple version is just like frying in a cast iron pan with some butter, herbs, and garlic. And then the longer version, Domin, is if it's like a really thick steak, like two inches or more thick, we slowly cook it. It's called reverse searing until it's like medium rare inside and then you rest it and then you sear it off. Usually we go like right over the charcoal that style. That's good too. Yeah, I don't know if I would go for the raw chicken, but this for sure is good. Yeah, I could see that FCB thin slices remind you of the yakiniku in Japan. <laughs> yeah, stinky. I don't think the hurricane's gonna get to Seattle. But maybe they know people in those places, right? Like, we're kind of worried about some people. All right, BRB, hold tight. I will return. So we've cleaned the beef and we slice, and now we're freezing the first time. And I'll come back with potatoes. We'll do, we're going to use our mandolin today for Madame Rainbow Pants. She has the same one now, so show her how that will work. 
We'll slice our potatoes using that. And then I'll gra grab some cold water as well for them. Potatoes. And I would for sure recommend using a baker's potato or if you can get your hands on it, the next best thing is a Kennebec potato. But those can be hard to source. So I would go with baker's potato. Wouldn't recommend a thin skinned or white flesh potato if you're gonna make chippies out of it. Might need a bit of a little rinse roux as well. We'll see. So let's do... I'm also trying to grab like like-sized potatoes from the bag here. We'll make like extra chips too, right? Because that's tasty. That seems like enough. Way more than enough, let's say. Pack the rest of that up. I guess since we're soaking in water, it doesn't really matter whether we wash this now. I'm going to go grab the mandolin. You always rinse the taters. I find especially russets have a lot of residual dirt on them always. And we're gonna slice them with the skin on. Yeah, I would say McCain mostly uses russet potatoes for all of their french fry products. I think they're the most forgiving to grow and then they're really good for frying too, right? Skin on tater salad or nothing, Eric says. Yeah, I'm with you on that, dude. Oh. Doggo says moo. She agrees as well. She has settled in her chair. Oh, I, so I just had Five Guys fries like what? Maybe a month ago for the first time ever in my life. And the, the franchise that we have here at Manning Crossing was amazing. Yeah, the fries were insanely good. I was like, I need to see what all this hype is about. I understand the hype now. Scar, you can eat a whole potato or sweet potato. Not raw though, right? mandolin acquired. I'm just going to grab this little container here. We'll slice the potatoes into this because they need to be submerged in water as well and really recommend cold water if you can. So before we even slice them because the potatoes like to oxidize and turn brown right as you start opening them up just gonna go grab some cold water real quick. Be right back. I'm not even gonna mute.
yeah, that sun feels nice today. Got our water, we're ready to go. Start with two guys and work your way up, loser. <laughs> you now have five guys near you, Uncle Stinky. Green Fang, you wanna try five guys, but there are those who say it's overrated and greasy, but this is one of those times where it's best to not rely on the opin opinions of others. Yeah, like I said, is like the, the one franchise restaurant we have close to us was really good. But I have heard the same things from other people too. It's like, nah, it's like bottom tier. So obviously those people's five guys who was ever working there, not as, not as much love being put in. Okay, this is our slide insert thin. Should be thin enough. We'll do a check on the first one. Don't want it too thin nor do you want it too thick, right? And then before we even start, we put our cup proof glove on. Holy, you'd have to go to Ottawa or Sudbury just to even try it. Well, if you ever pass through, maybe that's when you can try it, right? And thank you for the follow, VV May. Welcome in. So this will protect us if anything slips. I do need a new one though, because one of these fingers got wrecked. There's a little hole in it. So I've just got to watch. Okay, we're safe. I'm just going to grab it, and then obviously we're going to slice in rounds, holding the potato upright this way. Some people are scared of raw meat. You're scared of mandolins. Yeah, you, we should be, Ron. That's pretty accurate. Let's see these first few slices. Yeah, I think that's gonna fry up really nice. You can like just kind of see my finger through their hand. I think that's gonna be awesome. Wouldn't go any thinner, nor would I go any thicker. So away we go. That was really easy. And if you have a food processor, you might be able to get away with having the slicer attachment on there. We could have done this with the RoboCoop, but I told Madame that we would try out the mandolin this week for her. Sweet. We're making chippies. Right into the water. Oh no, stinky. Cut proof glove is a must. Your finger or your pinky fingertip was lost to your mandolin. I know you never, like you think you'll always be good until you make that one mistake once and you're like, whoa, that was terrible. Watch near the end, right? That's always the scary part. So once we get there, we can say that's it. Probably just discard that because it's not an even thickness, but that looks awesome. Yeah, quick way to get rid of your fingerprint. Sam's done the same thing on like a slicer before, so yeah. All the people I hear that lose their fingertips would not recommend it. Good to know. <laughs> We even have a little bit of a, a smoke powder spice. I think we have hickory and mesquite. 
That's really good if you mix it with the salt and put that on fried potatoes. Whether it's like tater tots or anything like that. Total little hickory stick vibe. Might have to sneak that today. Yeah, do like men in black, just burn them. Whoa, Palooza, that's a crazy story. Your stepdad blew off two fingers and parts of another making pipe bombs when he was a kid. Would not recommend. <laughs> I shouldn't even laugh, that's so terrible. I am sad for them. Oh, the things we do when we're young and don't have as much fear. Yeah, we're gonna set the deep fryer up on the induction burner today. with our little oil thermometer. I think that'll be the safest way. And I mean, even to make potato chips, you don't have to deep fry. You can just do a sh little bit of shallow oil in a pan and just do a touch at a time if you, you're scared of the larger quantities, heating it up. Yeah, he also learned a lesson, which I suppose is good. Tough lesson to learn. <laughs> That's a rough one. We're going to make a pretty good amount of chips today. This is amazing. I wonder if popcorn seasonings work good for seasoning potato chips. Probably. A little salt and vinegar. Oh, it's cool, Green Fang. That's a, like, humorous way to go about that, for sure. Because, like, that's the thing, is you have no choice but to learn to live with those injuries. Boom. Another step done. Brown eye two coming in here. Cheering a hundred biddies to the food truck fun. Thank you for that, brown eye. Hope you're having a great Sunday. We appreciate that. Supporting us in our future endeavors, goals for the stream, etc. All right. So done with that scary machine. Can put that to the side. Thanks for the follow, Reese's Pieces 17. Okay, one thing I will do, I'm just gonna keep this, our bone and knife soaking. I'm gonna bring some of these dishes in real quick here because the flies are being terrible already. Let's just clean this up for our potato starch. Can be a bit evil. Yeah, for sure, Green Fang. Okay, so that was a really good amount of water that I poured in here. Look at this. Potatoes, good to go. Looks awesome. We'll pop a lid on and then those can soak literally in, until we're ready to fry. And if you have an air fryer, you might even be able to do your chips in there. I guess you just have to try it, right? So potato slice and soak, check. And then the next step for those is we need to heat up some fryer oil. So I'm gonna use canola oil today to 350 degrees Fahrenheit up to 375 Fahrenheit. 
And yeah, just some of the stuff they see exactly, Palooza, the PTSD from that. Nuts. Okay. I am going to return and I think we're going to make some mayo next. So let's take a peek at the recipe here. Tartar mayonnaise. Oh, he makes it in the food processor. But I think we can easily just whip it by hand. It's so easy. And then this mayo will stay for up to a week in the fridge. Fresh made mayo. And so we make the mayo and then we add these ingredients to it. Once we start mixing it into the meat. So ready for this ketchup? Mustard, Tabasco, Worcestershire, salt. We wouldn't expect the ketchup, but it adds just like that subtle sweetness and tanginess that we would want. Oh yeah, Starfruit came out with their own version of the magic bullet. Those are handy too. Yeah, I have a little ninja bullet somewhere in a box. So we're just gonna make it by hand today. So put all the ingredients except for the oils into a bowl. That's basically how I make my mayo as well. So two egg yolks, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, lemon juice, vinegar, Worcestershire, Tabasco salt, and then it's a mixture of half and half grapeseed oil and olive oil. Yeah, it's just a mini blender, basically like a secret sauce. Exactly, Palooza. So I'll return with some of those ingredients. And then we'll get into that. And yeah, like I said, I'm just going to go bring those, my meat board and those few meaty things in. Because the flies are being crazy. That. What else? I need the two oils still. Got egg, lemon, brought the shallot out now. Oh yeah, the vinegar. A bit of Tabasco. Yeah, that would be good. A little hot sauce. Worcestershire. Okay, go have a good doggo walk. Sounds really nice. Our salt and we'll do fresh cracked pepper in there. Okay, be right back with the vinegars and the oils. Gherkins ahead of time. That, that, that. Um, I don't know if there's any other Canadians in here, but I've been having a really hard time finding sherry vinegar in grocery stores. It just doesn't exist anymore. There's red wine vinegar, malt vinegar, balsamic, apple cider, and white. That's it. 
So I chose malt. I think that will be very similar to the sherry that they are calling for. I find that a bit odd though. Okay, just our hot sauce and then I think that is it. You put the habanero stuff in the fridge. Okay. Blend. Oh, I can just do the Franks. I'll just do the Franks brand. It's okay. Because the habanero might be too spicy. It's okay. It might be in mine even. I, I bet you. It's okay. We're, we're good. We got Frankers. Franks, Tabasco. Same, same, but different. Yeah, look it up. Look up the recipe, White Dove. It's quite simple, I have to say. Okay, hang tight. We'll pop you to the cutting board. I'll be right back. Just bringing some dishes in. These insects are insane today. It's mayo time. We're even making the mayo the hard way. Using our own arm power. Okay, let's get a bowl. I think it'll be nice if I use the silicone. Silicone whisk in a glass bowl shouldn't be too, too loud. <laughs> Okay, so first thing, we need two egg yolks. Two fresh egg yolks. Wouldn't the acids in the lemon vinegar hot sauce mustard once incorporated in the mayo partially cook the meat? Mmm, a bit. I think having the oil barrier green thing in the mayo kind of stops that from happening. But yeah, if you added the lemon separately to the meat, for sure, for sure. I would think that would happen. Okay, just gonna crack this over compost and take the yolk out from there. Interesting. I'm also gonna take off the little stringy bit from the yolk, even if it breaks it. Sometimes it weirds me out. <laughs> this compost has uh, gotten quite funky over the weekend, just with the warm weather again. Like, oh my God. There we go. No cross contamination. But yes, we always start with the yolk first. If you're gonna make mayo, this is the same basis as making a hollandaise too, if anyone's ever wondered about that. So next one, we can also get our whisk ready to go. Getting a little workout in today. Just kind of blitz those up. Get our lemon. Just looking at the recipe for the amounts here. Two teaspoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So let's roll this. That'll loosen up the juices a bit more. Pop it in half, and then I think we'll just use the juicer. 
get the most amount out of this and then we'll just watch as the juice falls to make sure that we're adding the right amount. Start there. You can always add more, but uh, you can't take it away, right? And yeah, at this point, the lemon almost like cooks or semi cooks the yolk. Next one, so a teaspoon of vinegar. Little drop. A drop of Tabasco. We're gonna use Frank, so one, two. And then lastly, a couple tablespoons. They do like Dijon creamy mustard, I'm guessing. I'm just gonna use a bit of this grainier one. That's okay. I will add some unique quality to our mayo today. And I think the mustard seeds will actually go great with the tartar. So mix all that up. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna mix our oils together. I think they did half a cup of grapeseed, half a cup of olive oil. Pour that into a container with a spout so that it is easy to drizzle as you're whisking with your other hand. And the reason for the half and half oils is olive oil is quite strong on its own. So if we cut it with a milder oil like grapeseed or canola oil, you won't have any bitterness in the mayonnaise in the end. I will never forget the time that one of the restaurants Sam and I worked in together, one of the cooks used cold pressed canola oil to make a big ass batch of mayo, like 10 liters, nuclear looking mayonnaise. It was hilarious. And also the most expensive mayo ever. <laughs> Hi, Clemmy, how are you? Welcome in and happy Sunday. Hope your week is finishing up nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna whisk, I think with my left hand and then drizzle with my right. You add a bit at a time and it should literally like thicken up almost instantly as we do this. Did it impact the taste a bit? Yeah, it was like very floral from the cold press because you got a lot of the canola flower flavor. So funny. It's like those cold pressed oils are typically just used as a garnish. Not for any cooking or prep. But hey, to each their own, right? <laughs> Okay, so that was all of the measured out. I'm gonna add a little bit more, just for consistency wise. As you can see, it's thickened, but not quite there. We want it a bit thicker for sure. And I'll just drizzle right from the grapeseed oil bottle. <laughs> I think so. I think so, Green Fang. Like maybe there was no one else around to ask the question and that's the only oil that was there. You're gonna use it. Yeah, she's thickening it up. And then we gotta remember to use this up for something else, whatever is left. It's a pretty good amount of mayo.
Okay, I'm gonna stop there. And then we'll like really whip it. I think that's good now. It's not gonna be nearly the same as what store-bought mayos are. So if you're thinking that's how it's gonna turn out, no. Dr. Voltaic. Oh yeah, thanks for explaining al dente yesterday. You think you got it right, good. I'm happy to hear that. Happy to help out as well. Okay, so now just incorporate a bit more air into there and that'll thicken it up too. And it's not super pale in color because of all of the flavorful ingredients that we've added to this. This ain't your basic mayo. And then we'll taste this and we just have to add a bit of salt and pepper. Wasn't that way easier than dirtying a food processor? I would say. Whip it good. Yeah, my arm's a bit sore. That's why I stopped. <laughs> good consistency though, the way that it coats the spoon. Nice little lemony acidity. We might need a touch more. Let's add the salt and pepper first just to get this flavor proper. Um, unseasoned mayo is like very fatty and bland on the palate. All I kind of taste right now is the oils. So let's add some salt to contrast that. We'll go with a nice like finely ground pepper in this. Yeah, in a larger quantity food processor or we used to make our big batches of mayo in like our stand mixer with the whisk attachment because that's really easy too. So whatever you really have around to help you with the larger quantity would be good. Yeah, might need a touch more lemon juice. That's kind of all I thought. Because we're going to be adding more flavors into this before it gets mixed with the beef anyways. They're coming to get us. That was better. There is a fire. Not enough salt for sure. They're coming for my mayo. It's too hot. <laughs> You know what, View? I saved one portion of brisket for Sammy, just in a small container, and Finn actually took three portions of brisket, like three pounds with three pieces of cornbread to work with her. We're feeding Finn's people at work. So excited to hear what they think. Let's add a bit more lemon here. It needs it, it's kind of bland. And I'm also gonna add a couple more drops of our Franks. How's Sammy doing today? Better. He is doing better than yesterday, which is good to see and hear, right? Uh, got an email from like his COVID test saying that they need to do additional testing. So I don't know whether that's good or bad. That's all I got so far. Congestion is kind of gone, but he still has that weird cough, which I don't like. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping too. So like if Finn feeds all of her people today at work, then that completely basically pays for the meal for all of us. Okay, so the other thing we have to remember as we add more and more liquid to this, it is gonna make it thinner. So we can't do too, too much. Will affect the consistency, but let's mix that in. That should have doctored it up beautifully. Hey, Pfizer, how are you doing? Hmm, that's nice. In my honest opinion, I don't love making mayos with olive oil. So like that's the only flavor that I'm not liking is this, is even though we cut the olive oil halfway with grapeseed, you still get that little bit of bitterness. But 
we're not just eating the mayo it's going to be put with other things so that might be nice later on in the dish once everything is mixed together let's not bash it too much let's not leave the mayo in this bowl we'll pack it up pop it in the fridge and that's another thing done you're okay you're waiting for the storm are you on east coast I'm scared for your, all of you over there. Truly am. Okay, we'll use a spatula. Just tap this off. Whoa. Throwing mayo everywhere. You're on the Gulf Coast. You're down there then, hey? Gulf Coast is the storm, yeah. Pork the white meat. Welcome in. And yeah, I used Frank's in this because it adds flavor but not spice. We're not making a spicy mayo today. Just a basic one. So I can go with some other stuff. So like two cups worth, it looks like we made. That's, that's good. Well, I hope that everyone stays safe throughout the storm. We are worried about all of you. And let us know if you need help with anything too. Man, something's going down. Whew, it's a busy day out here today. So we did, yeah, blended grapeseed oil and olive oil. Here's the recipe that we're working off of right now. It's from Serious Eats. So mayo complete. Next up, we're gonna be working on the accoutrements is what I called them. Is just the couple of things that get added into the tartare. You take your raw chopped beef and you mix these like pickles, capers, diced shallot, some of the mayo into there and like season the beef, right? Because you don't just eat raw beef with nothing else. You can, but it's not the best. And yeah, a lot of chefs doctor up their tartare quite differently, which is always fun to see. So now what do they say? When all the beef has been chopped, add in the diced shallot, caper, cornichon, parsley, anchovy, oil, garlic, salt, pepper, gently mix with a fork until it's combined. Add the tartar mayo and again, mix until it's combined and then you serve with whatever you want, your potato chip, baguette slices, whatever you're feeling. Okay, there's two comments on the recipe here from like opposite ends. Yeah, the storm we're talking about is Hurricane Ida. So first comment, <laughs> two years ago, tartare is great. However, leave out a good amount of the ketchup. Don't pay any attention to the complaining bag from the other comment as he obviously has no clue what tartare is. This person, worst tartare I've ever had. It was okay until the ketchup mayo part. Way too much sauce, way overpowered the meat, way disgusting. Ever do this at home, folks? Seriously. That was aggressive. No one even replied to it either. <laughs> Seriously, it's is like to heck with ya. Okay, let's pop our mayo in the fridge so it stays nice and fresh. I will be back with the parsley. We have our shallot, caper, cornichon here already. Yeah, we love the positivity, hey? Worst tartare ever, they're saying, Vune. And hi, Annie. Happy Sunday, Annie. And then after this, we'll also 
I'll go quickly check on the meat in the freezer, see how it's firmed up for us. Maybe we can do the next slice. Get that stuff as cold as possible. You're almost at 38k pots and pans, so it won't be long before you have enough for another meal redemption. There you go, Green Fang. Look at this. Whoa. This is like some of the nicest parsley I've ever seen in my life. Beautiful. You surfed out and surfed back for two seconds. <laughs> Pfizer, can't believe what other Twitch people are streaming. <laughs> Is cilantro still hard to find? I didn't even put it on the menu this week, Annie, because I was afraid that it would be. I didn't peek. I didn't even look for it at the store, if I'm being honest. It's like, to heck with it. Okay, let's take out a little bit of this. We're not gonna be chopping the entire bunch. And it does help, it will stay better if we take that apart too. Sama, thanks for gifting the sub to Pfizer. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Pfizer. We didn't even make a dent in this bunch. I'm gonna take a little piece from the inside where it's nice and fine. We got a Scooter Beach in here as well already. Hi, Scooter. Yeah, welcome to the crew, Pfizer. Enjoy your stay. Hopefully we can teach you something new today. Let's pick our parse. Are you eating spicy sky raisins? Be careful. Dog was protecting. Be careful. Are you good? <laughs> She's good. This might even be too much, but we'll do it all. Thanks for the follow as well, Pfizer. Welcome, welcome. Happy you found us. We're just going to use, probably put the parsley in this. We'll put all of our diced cornichon caper shallot in this other one. You're saving your pots and pans? Hey, that's a good idea. I love the menu request. Okay, chef knife time. So we'll just bunch this all up is what I usually do. Hold it in your one hand, opposite your knife. We'll roughly go the, through this first, and then we can come back and make it more fine afterwards. We're gonna be shaking a bit today. Oh, for your maybe packs trip. See if you decide to go or not. So you're just getting like prepped ahead of time scooter. Could be a last minute thing. Is it just because of like COVID you're waiting on it? Or are you still trying to source tickets? Yeah, we're shaking. We're chopping. That's our next step actually. 
maybe not after stream today, but probably after tomorrow's stream, I'll come out here and start extending my mounts so that we can get the cameras off of in front of me and then it won't shake anymore. Winning. Hi, madame. How are you? Madame, did you by chance get a, a little peek when we used the mandolin for our potatoes? Making our chippies today? We're gonna go really fine for this too, if you're wondering. There we go. Haven't chopped like that in a while. Very green parsley. Almost looks like fake. Okay, so there's that. Oh, you just got out of bed because <laughs> that's your life. Were you staying up way too late last night playing The Sims again? Madame. Kind of made a little messy. Also wiping up the green, the herb oils before they just straight soak into the wood. Awesome. So parsley, shiggity check. Oh my gosh, Greek. Speaking of mandolin, your buddy almost cut his finger to the bone on Friday. Please be careful. Oh, cool, Scooter. That's really cool. I will say like just from experience going to TwitchCon, we only actually went the first day and then we sold the other two days of tickets to someone else. We found like we were able to do everything at TwitchCon in a day and then you just use the other days to like hang out and explore, meet new people, if that helps at all. Can you use the stem of the parsley to get more flavor or anything? Uh, I would save those for something more like a stock or a broth if you wanted to. The parsley stem is a bit woody and chewy, so it's not the best to use up in like a raw form. Wouldn't recommend. Oh, okay, madam. Sounds good. <laughs> He works in the trauma unit, so he was all good. Well, at least he can take care of himself. We got a Lauren and an Annie in here. Oof, watch out, world. Watch the heck out, world. Okay, we got this little bit of leftover shallot from yesterday's stream. I think we can get into this and do a fine dice. And honestly, that's probably all we'll need is that really small amount. Oh, his wife works at as a nurse. Well, that's, that's handy for sure. So I might even use, just because this is so small, it might be better to make our very small slices using our paring knife. Man, what is going on? Sunday in Edmonton, bumping. Hello? Where's the fire at? Okay, there we go. They're still coming. Oh, that's good as well, Scooter. Yeah, they're requiring a vax card or negative COVID proof just to get in. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, Rando. Is Rando starting fires in the schools again? <laughs> Poor guy. That's funny you remembered that, honey. OK. 
Okay. That was really good. I'm not going to use the end part of that. It's kind of soggy anyways. Yeah, that's a good amount. So like a little tablespoon of really finely diced shallot. Whenever we're mixing stuff like this into tartare, we do want to go really nice and fine with the garnishes so that you get a little bit of everything in each bite. So next up, tapers a little bit. Oh no, Pfizer. Okay, stay safe. Stay safe out there. The wind's picking up. I think like two more of these will be good. One teaspoon of diced caper. Because these are brined, right? So it's a salt brine. So yes, they're briny, salty, pack a good flavorful punch. Once again, dice those up. How's Mr. Titan doing today on this fine Sunday? <laughs> Mish was throwing around that word no problem on yesterday's stream. You don't like capers, madame? You're saying that you don't like a brined flower, bud. But they go in so many good things, though. So into the shallots. Those can all go together because they're going to be added together. Next one are cornichon or gherkins. The word? Oh, the word, Mish. No way. Capers, olives, and shellfish. That's so funny because like all of those things go great together. That's an absolute no for madame. I need a gherkin in my life for sure. Mmm. Good flavorful brine. Good spice flavor. Let's do only two of those. Bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. Annie will take feta over capers any day. They're quite sweet, Eric, I will say. Just that bite is like reminded me of going to my grandparents' house when I was young. You don't have a bug out bag, but you have a bug out car. That's kind of what we're building our truck to be too. A little bug out situation. When the world goes to all heck. We'll be safe in there. Be able to cook so many delicious things still. <laughs> so thin slice through these first. And then we can layer it all back together and then slice through again. Leave the end pieces on their own. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So now, whoa, that was slippy. Slippery pickles. That's gotta be the name of a deli. Someone better steal that. The Slippery Pickle Deli. <laughs> Belizer, how did I know you were gonna love that? <laughs> <laughs> you got that name trademarked right now. <laughs> Dang it, it's already taken. Okay, got all of our dainty pickle slices. Now we'll dice it. Slow and controlled. 
good little bit of knife skills to do some tartare today as well. Good practice, cutting things more fine and consistently. I've quite enjoyed this. Nice. Look at that. I need to hold this up. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by my own self. Look at those little squares. You know what? Fried, fried chicken hearts are actually not bad. If they're prepared right, it's kind of like a chicken nugget. That's okay. That's kind of pushing it for me, but that's, that's maybe my limit. Okay, shallot, caper, cornichon, or gherkin, parsley. Boom, boom, boom. So anchovy filet, there's garlic clove that also gets mixed in. I'm gonna bring a few of these things back in, come out with our anchovy garlic, add that to that. And then we're almost done prepping the mix-ins for the beef. And then I think we can start heating up the oil because we'll do the chips first. Get all the chips done because then it's just a quick mix up of the chopped beef with all of these other ingredients. Lots of prep, very short cook time. And if you don't want to do any cooking, just serve it with baguette. Okay, done with these. Anchovy, actually on a pizza, depending on the other ingredients, can work. It just has to be good quality anchovy for it to not be gross. Whoa. You've had pork tartare before in Germany, Annie? That is crazy. Was it good? Okay, leave that there. Take the parsley in. Yeah, I've prepped the mayo. We've sliced the meat, but we still have to get it diced. It's just chilling in the freezer to firm up. Scat, welcome in. Happy Sunday to you. Hope you're not working too hard today. You were nervous, but it was quite good. Yeah, very soft is what I would assume it to be. Cause like pork meat raw is that texture very soft. Did they season it with uh, similar ingredients, Annie, or something a bit different? This, this away. Done with that and that. Do we need olive oil to add into here? What is this oil for? Extra virgin olive oil. Let's see. Like I say, I find that it's a bit too funky of a flavor, it might overpower the beef. So let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe no cornichons. I could see that. Maybe more of like a, a briny dill pickle. anchovy in a tube. One garlic clove. That's cool green fang. Yeah, I don't think I ate enough carrots growing up because my night vision is terrible. Palooza coming in with the fun facts. Met is a German delicacy of raw minced pork, often purchased from the butcher already spiced with salt and pepper, sometimes garlic and ground caraway. That's total German, the caraway. And then in Northern Germany, it's known as Hackepetter. If raw onion is added, then it's called Zwiebelmet. Cool. 
Thanks for that, Palooza. We're learning stuff. Okay, anchovy. It can't be much. One anchovy filet minced. I'm just going to squeeze out of the tube. I find it stays better this way. And it's already minced in the tube. So skipping a step. And that's not a large amount either. One filet. It's like half a teaspoon, let's say, of the anchovy. Just want to clean that off. Get in there. That will add some umami to the tartar for sure. We know this. A little bit of fishiness. You're not going to taste the fish. But it's just going to add some depth of flavor. Our garlic clove. I think I got my garlic press here. We can mince this up nice and fine. That's going to be strong, having the raw garlic clove. So you determine how garlicky and kind of spicy you want it. We might not add all of this. Mary, yeah, your night vision sucks. You can't drive when it's dark. Mine, what I've been told by the optometrist is my eyes just take a um, longer time to focus than most people. So they're not like lacking in their sight, just takes longer for them to focus. And I guess that's okay. Yeah, right, Lauren. I don't know why raw meat scares me considering I like my prime rib rare and my salmon raw. <laughs> Torino, anyone wanna buy a POS PC for half a pack of hubba bubba and a hug? <laughs> that is all I'm gonna lay down. Hi Torino, hope you're having an okay day today. Okay, let's do that. Oh, that was the one garlic clove. Okay. Clean that off. That's minced, good to go. Shall we eat? Rinse off our garlicky knife. And those I think are our last two flavoring ingredients that we needed. And then just to keep it fresh, we'll just pop a little lid on these doesn't necessarily have to go into the fridge right now though Just pop that to the side we'll put the anchovy back in the fridge for sure we have our oils here beside us so good to go there and we can cross off some of our list too was this steak frozen? No, we we took it from an entire beef tenderloin today, Lauren. Cleaned it up. I sliced about like that much thick of the meat, quarter inch slices, and then I stacked it all back together. So it looks like a steak, but it's already thinly sliced. Right now we just have it in the freezer, getting more firm, we can say, so that we can come back through and get your thin strips of beef and then dice it from there. And that way it'll be diced really nice and consistently and not get like mushy from like really having to chop it a weird way. Okay, that shallot, caper, cornichon, parsley, everything else, done. So all we have left, slice and dice the beef, fry our potatoes for our chips, crushed it. So we can set up the induction with the pot now just on the board and get our oil heating up. Defo pop our shim on there. Annie, holy smokies. Thank you so much for all of those biddies. And he's crushing the bitlies before he goes back to school. I know this. I've been here before. Sometimes I get sad. <laughs> it's like, and he's leaving us soon. <laughs> Thank you for the 2,800 biddies for the food truck fun. Even it out at a 60%. And can we even believe that that actually converts to $6,000 already? No, we can't. We can't believe that. What the heck? 
so many heavy hitters on that food truck fund. We're going to be feeding you guys for like a week straight for free. <laughs> Some of you at least. Interesting, Scoots. Got to go to the eye doctor every year to get them checked. I mean, that's always a good idea anyways. Dr. Pepper scented candle. Yeah, cherry vanilla. Nom. Okay, clean that. Get my Dutch oven on here. We'll use the green pot today. Look at these flies are just insane out here. Absolutely insane. Fryer oil, just got to get this plugged in. That is the sound of its people. What are we going to make the goal when we're done with the food truck fund? Probably start putting up goals to travel certain places, Mish. I'm not entirely sure yet. Because, yeah, once the truck is, like, outfitted, we should not really need too, too much. Just some support, being able to travel with it, maybe upkeeping, stuff like that. I guess we'll see. That's a good question, Mish. Hi, Timber. I'm doing good today. How are you doing? Welcome back. Okay. Switcheroo. Oh, open that. No, maybe not too far. Do this. Center it up. Or maybe I'll set up a different little chippy station here. There, that's better that way. And now, get our oil. Produce stands on the side of the road with boiled peanuts? Okay. That's where I'm stopping. Under halfway. No riskage of going over. So we'll pop this on. Just turn the heating down on it to like 900 watts. And then the temperature's at 180. Let's go up to 210. And now we're using the handy dandy thermometer that Vyun was asking about the other day here. How to temp your oil. We use this, see how it says candy or deep fry. We have a little clip on the bottom, just clips onto the side of the pot. And then that monitors the temperature of the oil for us as it's heating. And we don't want that to touch the bottom of the pot. So we'll make sure that it's just like right in the center there. That will be the most accurate heating too. So once this comes up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit up to 375, we can start to fry our potatoes for our chips. It's really quite a simple process. Okay, gonna get rid of a couple extra things. 
do a little cleanup while we're waiting. Can take the potatoes out of the fridge as well. Really, really easy to make beef tartare. I thought it was gonna even take longer than this and it didn't. That, we'll leave the Worcestershire out, we'll leave the hot sauce, bring the grapeseed oil back in. Check it out. There's all of our sliced potatoes for the chips. Just sitting in the cold water. It's drying out starches from them. And then also helping to keep them from oxidizing. So turning brown once they hit the air. So before the potatoes go into the oil, they do have to get dried off just a little bit. Otherwise, water, hot oil, splashes, might hurt yourself. So recommended to maybe have like a sheet pan lined with a towel, line it with a towel on the bottom, spread out some of these from the water, put a clean towel on top and just kind of pat them semi-dry before they go into here. Because yeah, once this oil is hot, this is going to go quite quick. So you really want to be set up. You had it once by accident, madame, and you were traumatized from the tartar. Mm, doesn't keep them from drying out. It keeps them from turning brown when they hit the air after slicing. So I'll have also one pan here just to hold the potatoes after they've been fried. And you can line that with paper towel if you want. I'm just gonna put a clean dish towel on because I'll try and get rid of most of the grease when they're coming out and then you can also grab, we need a strainer to scoop the chips out of the hot oil as well. Yeah, there is history behind that, Annie. Like beef tartare or steak tartare being originally served with tartar sauce. But the coolest history about this dish is one thing that someone has found looking up the history of it is it's based off of Mongol warriors who would have their horse meat and slide that under the saddle, tenderize the meat raw as they rode their horses and basically made tartare out of that when they stopped. <laughs> so cool. Look what else I just brought out. Hickory, like spice, hickory powder. That's insane. So you were fed the tartare that you don't even like being like blindfolded or in the dark. So you didn't even know. Okay, this is what we're dealing with right now. It's a bit cakey, but I'm gonna try and work some off of there so we can mix the salt in. 
We're making hickory chips. Now you use the Traeger and BGE as ovens. Can they be used to slow cook meats like tenderloin? 100% green thing. The big green egg is probably the most versatile. And yeah, the Traeger works the best as an oven. We can say not the best for searing steaks or anything like that grill wise. But baking or roasting, yes. Okay, no registering on the thermometer just yet. The other thing I can use is the heat gun for the liquid oil. That always works good. I loved hickory sticks growing up. I know this will be a nice little like smoky flavor. I don't want to put the flavor on the meat, but having a bit of it on the potatoes is really yummy. Holy Annie, just a chip off the old block, eh? I'm sure Rando could find an old wooden block for us. <laughs> just for the meme of it. Yeah, I'm sure the processed version of hickory sticks that you get in the store now, probably quite salty. Everything's just like overly salted and overly sweetened nowadays. Okay. Make sure there's no big chunkers left. How are you doing, puppers? You doing good? Were you just roasting? Hot dog. There we go. Hickory powder. Mix that with a bit of salt. Maybe go a bit finer. Because it is a very strong powder. It's basically like a powdered smoke, right? That can be very strong on the palate if you have a big chunk of it by accident. Now we've made hickory salt. Mmm, palooza. Warm chocolate chippers. Right out of the oven. Yes, please. Cool. That was fun. Okay, still no reading on the thermometer yet. It just might mean that the oil is nothing warmed. But let's see, because I feel like that's not accurate. Yeah, maybe it's broken. I will be sad because it's already at 137 in there with this other thermometer. Oh, <laughs> I tapped it. And now it's actually working. Literally just tapped the front of it and it was like, boop, up to the right point. Okay. One of those things where maybe the equipment's older, maybe it just needs a little love tap. That was that. Okay, so we have our seasoning ready for our chips. Good to go there. Once again, we got a prep one sheet pan with just a towel or two. 
to dry off the potatoes before they get dropped in the oil. Highly recommend. Maybe I'll move it to this side so you guys can watch too. Will that be better? And then it'll kind of be out of my way as well. So yeah, now it's saying like 150. So we're going. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go take a really quick bathroom break just cause we do have that time right now. So might as well. And then we'll come back and start frying, I'm sure. Yeah, the oil's heating, the potatoes are soaked. Okay, gonna mute real quick. BRB, hang tight, talk amongst yourselves. Okay, I'm back, friends. Puppers is so cute. If I ever leave the kitchen, she always... I think this thing's just stuck. She always follows me to make sure I'm okay. The Fonz <laughs> did that because he was the Fonz. Is the dog gonna steal food? I don't think she would. There's nothing really tasty here for her anyways right now. And yeah, I've never seen the, that show either. I think I'm a bit too young for it, sadly. Okay, what are we at now? Okay, it's slowly climbing. I think I'll turn this up to 240 F. We're at 150. So we need it at least doubled still. that in the garbage, put some other stuff away while we're waiting. Yeah, I didn't even watch the Brady Bunch. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Madame says, wait, Kate, hi. What's going on? What's happening? I'm not using the other thermometer for a fluid. Well, I had this one. 
This is a deep fry and candy thermometer. And then we do have this one. I just don't have a battery in it right now and that's okay. I don't need to fool around with it. How am I liking it? I'm actually quite enjoying it, Mish. Kind of getting better at dialing it into the certain temperatures that I need for certain things. I think the more that I use it, the more comfortable I am becoming using it as well. LA uh, shared a fun fact. He also has the exact same one, same brand and everything, and he doesn't mind using it on his stream either. Wasn't the best making the like fried rice the other day? Wasn't the best. I think I just had to crank it a bit more, but so far it seems to cook very nice and evenly, which I like. And Mary, we're using just a simple canola oil for frying today. Yeah, we're already up to 150, so that's great. I think the thermometer is like just a touch off of what it actually is. You liked early Nickelodeon, grab tunes from other countries and aired them in the evening? Oh, cool, I didn't know that. Really? Cartoon Network is giving Ellen DeGeneres a cartoon for little kids called Little Ellen? About a fictionalized version of herself at eight? Okay then. That's for the parents who love Ellen, let's be honest here. <laughs> Not actually made for the kids. Interesting. I think the older cartoons were where it's at. Cartoons nowadays uh, seem a bit silly. I think we'll just go straight from frying all the potato chips into dicing up the beef. We'll let it just sit in the freezer for as long as possible. It'll get really nice and firm be super easy to finish at the end and mix it all together in a bowl. And then we can just think about what we want to serve it on. But I think I already have an idea of what I want. Just gotta go grab the plate real quick. Old Bugs Bunny was not very nice. Okay, that's true. It wasn't very nice, was it? So maybe not that old. Like I was born in 91. So 90s cartoons, let's say. Rugrats, reboots, all of that sort of stuff. Didn't really want watch SpongeBob, didn't watch Teletubbies, stuff like that. I don't even know what Rocket Power is. The ancient Bugs Bunnies, you actually want Elmer to get the rabbit. <laughs> he was bad, wasn't he? Oh, Bugs. Wild Thornberries. Spongebob had its moments, yeah? <laughs> I'd probably enjoy it now if I watched it. And then the only thing I'll really have to think about is once we get this oil to temp, It'll be all about like keeping it at that temp as we add the potatoes to fry. That could be a bit difficult compared to just a typical stove pot. Oh, you were a nanny when Teletubbies was on and you still have a Teletubby blanket? Amazing. I think I was already into playing sports at that point. So I was like, eh, take it or leave it. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the plate for us to plate our tartare on. I'll be right back. I don't think we'll need anything else special. It's just in the dishwasher. A rimmed plate to hold all of the deliciousness. Do 
Teletubbies was wasted on you? Yeah, I feel the same. <laughs> I'm gonna take a couple photos while I have some time here. Got a dirty lens stitch. Yeah, we're getting ready to fry, Ron. We're moseying right along today. The potatoes. Tasty taters. Okay. Got that. Bop was Barney. I didn't even watch Barney either. Yeah, I did grow up watching a lot of Simpsons. That is fact. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have, but that's okay. Hey, we're getting there. Yeah, you grew up? <laughs> I can smell the oil heating up even. 190? I mean, it would make sense, right? If I just put the induction to 330F. Yeah, canola oil. Just straight up frying canola oil. Let's see how long it takes up to heat up to 330F now on induction. Probably not long, I would say. Probably not long. Should not usually take more than about 15 minutes to heat up oil this way. Gonna look over the tartar directions one more time. I wish there was a photo of this tartar all done up. That's the only thing I feel like I'm missing. But I guess we can just Google Baltazar's steak tartar. I'm sure there's gotta be a photo. Nice. Yeah, totally serve with big ass. I think what we're gonna make today is actually gonna turn out better than how they'd make theirs. Just saying. Winning. Anything else that I gotta do? We got our pan here for the done chips to take out with the spider and then drain a bit off. And then we got our seasoning right close. We mixed our salt with some hickory powder, just getting rid of some of these lumps still. So kosher salt and a bit of hickory powder, which I had kicking around. So give it a bit of like a hickory smoky chip flavor, which I thought would be unique. Yeah, then we have all of this. Doesn't even look that good if I held it up. 
like the diced shallot, cornichon, capers, garlic, and anchovy. Whew, that has a smell to it. It actually smells so good. And then we got chopped parsley, and that's all we need. That is all we need. Okay, now we're ripping. Now we're ripping, heating this up. You can start to see the waves in it too. Two fifteen already now. There we go. And yeah, I mean, I don't often make potato chips at home, but it's not underrated. They're really, really good homemade. If you're someone who likes a really nice crunchy chip, I think these are gonna turn out great. if we miss any other stuff on tartar but i don't think so we hit all of the spots we even made it more fancy doing our own chips because you could easily call it a day and do no cooking and just do some sliced baguette served with it but i have to say it's like the tartar itself the raw beef with everything is like quite soft and mushy almost so to have a crunchy chip with it is very satisfying compared to soft baguette with soft meat. Not the best mouthfeel. What is this? Almost at 250 now. Now we're rolling. I think we'll for sure be done in about 40 minutes or so. Is Sammy a tartare fan? Yeah, he does like it, Lauren. I don't know if he'll partake today. Maybe I'll leave him like one or a couple bites just at the end to finish up. But he's definitely not sharing with us. Tartar tacos would be good, Palooza. In like a crunchy shell, for sure. That's a very unique way to present it, I would say. Okay, I think I'm gonna start draining the first potatoes. You like fusion? Me too. We don't wanna drain them too early though, cause then they will start to oxidize right away, right? But yeah, these look so awesome. And then I love how you put them in water, they curl up a bit. Not afraid to eat the mistakes. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you really shouldn't be, hey? is like, if you're going to try something, you kind of be afraid to eat it rather than throw it in the garbage because that's very wasteful. Okay, so I'll open this up just so you can see a bit where I'm working just right here. I'm gonna take this, take a handful, try and drain off most of the water first, shake it, and then pop it on the towel. Probably no more than this for a batch. It's actually more than enough than what we're going to need just for our tartare dish. And we're just going to spread this out as best as you can. Then we'll lay the other towel on top and just give it a little pat around. Dry these off. Minimize any risk of splashing onto you when you put them in the hot oil. Because, yeah, that can hurt and make you not want to do this ever again.
You are the religion of tacos. <laughs> Don't know if you post recipes, but for the chips, recipes, mandolin, yikes. Keep in ice water until frying. Canola, 375 degrees. Is that what you're saying that we're doing today? Yeah, we do post recipes. I didn't link one for the chippies today. I should have though. Let's see if I can find one real quick. And yeah, if you want to Ron, we do have a discord channel where we post all of our recipes that we make on stream, like three and a half years worth. There is a science to doing a proper potato chip. It's true. And hi Suki, yeah, tacos are a religion for sure. Oh, I don't even know how to make homemade Doritos. You're wondering if you should go out into the weather to see how things are going? Be careful, Pfizer. Be careful out there. You said it was already windy. Homemade potato chips. Taste of home recipe. Let's see what they say. And hi, Porritz, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, you better check out the Discord. We have like over 500 members in there. It's quite a large community we've built up over the years. And just as loving and exciting as being live on Twitch. This is what the taste of home chip recipe says. I'll quickly post it in chat, but it's really funny. <laughs> Here you go. They're coming for us again. Thank you, Ron, for the thousand biddies. That's for you, Ron, the sirens. Going towards the food truck fund. That is much appreciated. How are we doing, Porritz? So far, so good. We're just waiting for our oil to heat up to make our chips. They say using a vegetable peeler or metal cheese slicer, cut your potatoes into very thin slices. <laughs> and they say put in ice water, soak for 30 minutes, drain, place on paper towel to pat dry. And then they make their seasoning as garlic powder, celery, salt, and pepper, which is kind of weird. They say in a cast iron or heavy skillet, Heat one and a half inches of oil to 375 Fahrenheit. Fry in batches until golden brown, about three to four minutes. Remove with a slotted spoon, drain on paper towels. That's pretty accurate. I'm gonna quickly go post that in Discord as well, just if anyone else needs to view that at another time. Bam. Bam, ba bam. Hello, Bjorn. How are you? Oh, Lauren's almost at 75k pots and pans. I'm terrified. What is she going to request? Yeah, fire station number seven is 500 meters away, Sammy's saying. We are right there. We're at 250. 264. Okay, we're getting there. Yeah, sirens for the hot oil, exactly. Can't turn it up one more. Oh, they're coming for me, Ron? No! <laughs> and yeah, nice bit badge, Ron. You get a little flame there for your bitties. Bjorn, they're closing the fire station close to you. That means, yeah, you can't cook anymore. No one's safe. Watch out. If you live near Bor Bjorn, might have to put some fires out. Oh, 
Tika Sella, how do you get to your Amazon link? So Twitch has gone away with the blacksmith extension that we used to use. Don't ask me why. I think it's super unfair, especially for creators that use a lot of stuff on their stream, not just gaming. And yeah, I still have to make the dock with all of the links, Tika Sella. If you can think about how many things we use, it's it takes a while to get the proper links, make the docs, stuff like that. So what are you what are you wanting to support us with or check for on Amazon? Because I could quickly bring one up for you now. Hi, Chef Megan. How are you? Welcome in. Always good to have another food and drink streamer part of the kitchen crew. Is this right? I've been seeing you. You're kind of doing IRL streams, exploring some, some restaurants, stuff like that. Yeah, happy Sunday, friendo. You've been thinking about getting a Lloyd pan or two. Okay, so we do have a command for that. Yay, we can help you out really easily. So there you go. And that's only for the rectangle pan that we always use, Tika Sella. If you want a different size, let me know and I can search for a different link. Yeah, help out the home cooks. And thanks, Bjorn. I stick to watching you and your pro foods, miss. <laughs> so cute doing lots of IRL Negan plus still kitchen streams was not aware of all the different weather the east coast has right <laughs> right yeah stay safe out there yeah you're welcome T Casella okay we gotta be almost close we gotta be almost close here I'm getting antsy at least we know that the beef is gonna be nice and firm and easy to cut after this Okay, we're almost at, or we are at 300. Very, very near. We already got our first potatoes prepped for the fryer, dried off from the water they were soaking in. So already ready for the first set. Gonna go quick. We didn't soak them twice, nope. Oh. I was asking for the green egg, but figured you should start with this. You got your first smoker and you're so excited. What did you start with? That's so awesome. Congratulations, Chef Negan. Thanks so much, Tika Sella. Yeah, I super appreciate that. Every little bit helps, right? So thank you for supporting us through our Amazon affiliate links. Hob seems a bit slow. I did turn down like the heat wattage. I went from 1000 down to 900 because this is my first time heating up oil with it. And then I have the temp set at 360 Fahrenheit now. You're stoked to learn and master the bad boy. What type of grill did you get or smoker? You still got to clean and season it <laughs> soon, right? It is a process. You miss your little, yeah, the rooster, the cock emote. I think it might be on a different tier now. We've done a bit of moving around recently of those emotes. Okay, let's come in. Hello, Kalada from Vancouver. Welcome. I've lived there before. I hope you're having a nice summer. Yeah, you see it. It still lives on. We'll never get rid of Rooster. The OG Rooster from the island. <laughs> wake up. Wake us up every morning. It's very sunny. Nice. Okay. I'm going for it. Let's drop one in just to make sure we're happy. And then away we go. 
Yeah, I don't have any gas sources here, Mr. Ports, so this is what we get to work with. Yep, we're good. Ah! Just dropped a raw potato. Not even tasty. Do, 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 do. I think that's enough. Give those a little stirzy. What? Holy heck, doggo. We gotta fry the potatoes first. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> Yeah, my Kate, you look very chipper today. Thanks, Annie. Oh yeah, that's right. Mandatory masks again in Vancouver. Oh, I'm sure the same thing is gonna start happening here again. Trust me. The cases are getting a bit out of control again. And honestly, it's probably for the best for everyone's health and safety. Okay. So Dry off the next batch, get ready to go. This is your favorite ASMR, good. I'm glad I could offer those services to you today. It is really fun to fry stuff in a deep fryer, like other than smelling like a deep fryer afterwards, pretty enjoyable. Flower. Hi, flower. How was your weekend? Are you staying safe over there? The chippies are getting crinkly. So the recipe said about three to four minutes. And it does go way quicker if you have like a restaurant deep fryer. I will say that. So effortless. We're drying off the next potatoes. Give this another stir. Yummy. That's so good. One of my favorite things I made on the island even. With all the nice seafood. Chia pino. That was one that Dust Pirate requested actually. We also got super clean oil frying these today, so don't expect them to get too dark or golden brown. I mean, I don't know if that's really a thing you should ask streamers. So just be aware of that. But yeah, I'm double vaxxed. I'm double vaxxed. Yeah, the proper basket fryer. One of my favorite pieces of equipment in the restaurant, Palooza. It's just so handy. Oh, nice flour. Have some old and frozen halibut so it will work well. For sure it will for that. Caught by Michael's brother. That's so nice. Okay, we got a little bit of golden brown stuff happening here on a few of these. I like the temperature it's frying at. I don't know if we want to go any higher than this. Seems to be cooking nice and even. We can maybe turn it up one more. And you can see how like if you put too much potatoes in the pot, 
It doesn't really cook evenly in the oil. Is some of them will be floating up. Might be easier for me to just stir with like a little knife here rather than that big thing at first. There we go. So it does help if we keep them kind of constantly moving. We'll do this one more batch and then we'll just move this set up off of the cutting board and finish off the tartare and then I can finish all the chippies later. Some salt and malt vinegar chips. Nom. Do people ever batter chips or no? Not really a thing here. That would be maybe be a one-off thing, Ron. Palooza, you had a nice fryer you picked up secondhand. It finally died. A couple crappy ones after, just before calling it done. Yeah, they don't just make them the same anymore, right? Nowhere near the same. Okay, I can feel the crispage, so we're really close. This one is like totally almost done. Get a nice color on it. And then you can also tell that the chips are almost done being cooked when the sizzles really start to simmer down. Because then that means that there's not really any more moisture to cook out. You crisped it up. You did it. Congratulations. Will we fry them twice? Was not planning on it, Chase. If you fry it proper the first time, you don't need to do that with chips. It's a little bit different with French fries because there's more surface area that you have to cook because they're thicker, right? So that's why you do the lower temp to kind of cook the fries through and then higher temp to finish them and crisp them up. You need a go, Ron? Okay, sounds good. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and we will be back on tomorrow, same time, doing a menu plan for the week. So if you want to be involved in what we make, stop by. Look forward to seeing you. And thanks again for those bits as well. Happy you found us. Okay, it's very close. Yeah, I guess you could do an air fryer. I would be intrigued to see how it turns out on the air fryer. Try and drain out as much as possible. Okay. Now, I want to feel all of these. Yeah, they feel good. There's no soggy ones. And we could even go less dark, like I said. Mmm. What? Okay. So spread all that out. And we're going to get a season on here. While the oil is heating up again. For the second round. So just take a handful of the hickory salt. Sprinkle that right over as soon as they come out of the fryer. So the salt actually sticks. Mm, that's got to be good. Okay, I'm going in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Maybe it needs to heat up a bit more. Let's see. Doggo's mad I didn't give her one. I'm sorry. Yeah, 
Yeah, it creeped down a bit, so you can see the little bubbles in here heating back up. But it's heating up super quick. Like, it's already at 310 again. Awesome. This is working great. Yeah, you have to think about, like, literally the biggest fryer ever, Pfizer. And I'm sure there's, like, some sort of assembly line belt or situation going on to strain the o them out of the oil quickly. Greek, they so they do the frying part first, and then they sit, and then they add the seasonings onto it afterwards. Nutso. That's so crazy. Some amazing luck last year, Porritz. Got your hands on a commercial contact grill for free. School your brother was going to at the time renovated one, but the customer never came back to pick it up. Cool. When it was put in the garbage bin, your brother brought it home. <laughs> so cool. All right. I'm going to start putting in... More potatoes should be good to go. Yeah, a mini rolling boil, exactly, madam. Woohoo! Woo woo! This was one of my first ever jobs at the first restaurant I ever worked at. I think I told this story a touch the other day on stream. But yeah, I was the potato chip maker. We served fresh chips with like a homemade creamy onion dip with so many types of roasted onions, shallots, garlic. It was actually very delicious. When you slice fennel, do you like to take the core out first? Usually flour, like just enough of the core so that the, the layers of the fennel still stick together. I would recommend, although if you're gonna cook the fennel, it will soften up regardless. So usually I only do that if you're serving it raw, up to you. Madame, look it, look at them. They turned out so good. We did some hickory salt on there. I gave Rando a little bite already. Good question, Lauren. I have never worked for any chain restaurants in Canada. That is something that I re was really strict with when I first got into this career. And I'm happy that I did because just the stories that I hear from other people that work for chains, it's like the worst experience ever. It's not really cooking at all. You just cook by a computer and what it tells you to do. So it, you really don't learn anything. And that's why I never worked for a chain restaurant because I always wanted to learn as much as possible. You worked at McD's in the 90s? Nice. I mean, now though, I think it would be fun to just experience a day in the life. Yeah, literally just reheating, pretty much. It's so weird. Okay, so I'm gonna take these back in for now, just since we're doing a quick switch up. You were bullied, madame? No. No. I'm sad. Then when you quit, you were banned from working at McDonald's ever again? The heck? Laura Avname, thank you for the raid and welcome in. How was your stream today? What did you get up to? Thank you for sharing your peoples with us. Yeah, we're making homemade chips right now. Already did the first batch and we seasoned, we made like a hickory salt. 
from just some kosher, kosher salt and hickory powder. And this is gonna go with our steak tartare when we finish it up. Almeria, hello, welcome. Cool, Reese's. Worked at McD's in the 90s as well because your family owned a Chinese restaurant and you couldn't work for, like family couldn't work for income. That's fair, that's fair. Your stream was amazing, that's good to hear. You made bacon, eggs, Benedict con queso? Yes, please. A Mexican themed breast breakfast and mimosa flights. Kind of sad that I wasn't invited. <laughs> Are you still serving these things? I'll be right over. That sounds delish. So, so good. I heckin' love Eggs Benedict, so that variation, very unique. Give me all of the hollandaise sauce. Did you do anything crazy with the hollandaise? You're destroying it now? Yeah, there's a bit left. Okay, be right over. And hi, just joking. How are you? I suppose we could call them kettle chips. I mean, I'm not cooking them in a kettle, so I would get called out for that. But it's very similar to how they turned out if we take a peek again. Nom, 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 nom. You had a Benny like that at a cafe and you tried to recreate it and it's amazing. Garlic in the hollandaise is key. Sounds awesome. The potato, yeah, they're breathing. Okay, just gonna pop this back in the fridge. I'll be right back. keep it stirring, it seems to cook better that way or fry better. I love the sizzles though. So happy. I love how these are all just like perfectly bite-sized too. You don't have to unhinge your jaw to eat it <laughs> oh fresh jalapeno yes please lots of mimosas left perfect yeah salt and vin chips i was threatening me i was like do i make malt vinegar and salt chips later on with the rest probably probably will we can also take a peek at our list here so potato oil fry and season chiggity check the last thing we got to do is just take care of our beef, mix it all up with the flavorings, put everything on a plate. Annie, would this be a good time to make a quick chip pull about everyone's favorite chip flavor? Only if you have time though. And we can totally reuse the oil. Making potato chips is actually some of the cleanest frying you can do. It's when you get into like loose dredges. So like maybe panko or just a floury dredge on fried chicken, something like that, that it really messes up the oil because the flour falls back into it, right? And then it starts to kind of burn. And then along the lines of how clean this is, is fish and chips to make is very clean too. Cause the batter just condenses into itself, like fries, even if you have little bits of batter around and you just scoop that out and strain it. It doesn't keep burning inside of the oil. So yeah, 100% we'll be reusing this another time. One more stir, just to see where we got some residual stuff that needs to fry. 
and then very, very near to scooping these all out. Very close. Cheesy Doritos. Do they even make feta chips, Mish? Come on now. Nice. Annie got the pull up. Those were good options. Barbecue, salt and vinegar, sour cream and onion or plain. If you're wondering what I picked, I picked salt and vinegar. Although a ripple sour cream and onion is pretty okay too every now and then. Doritos are so good. Cheesy Doritos. Or is it the ranch one that's better? I mean, if you really wanted to be Canadian, Annie, you would have put ketchup flavor and all dressed flavor on the pole. <laughs> Just saying. Can I put this here safely? I think so. So spread this out now. And then we're gonna get ready to season it while everything is still warm, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that on there for a sec. It's okay, don't worry. Just take our hickory infused salt You can be quite generous with the salt on like all fried goods. It'll really take it. I mean, there is a point where it does become too salty. But for this, I think we're good. Okay, quick test. Mm-hmm. That is one happy tray. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, off. Hello, time okay? Yeah, good afternoon, troublemakers. And Chloe, what's up? Thanks for the follow, welcome in. How would you make sour cream and onion flavors with these chips? You would have to get a dried flavor of that Pfizer. It would be a bit of a feat trying to make that yourself. But I know places like Bulk Barn, etc., have like dried popcorn flavors available. I would say just use popcorn flavoring. Probably the best. Ketchup versus all dressed? All dressed. That was hard for me to answer though, just so you know. This stream is full of Americans. Salt and vinegar is the only choice, Flower. I love how strong Flower is about what she does and does not like. Very strong opinions and I love it. It's good to know these things. Okay, so gently, we are going to move this setup just over beside me here. I would not recommend any of you to do this, what I'm about to do. You probably wouldn't be confident enough. And then we make mistakes when we don't have the confidence. safe. We did it. We're good. Take our shim out. Do a little wipe of the board. Next. Oil can just stay warm there. Oh, that one was so good, Green Fang. The blue bag of Miss Vicky's caramelized onion and sour cream. That one was nummy. Chips in a sandwich. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the beef. Let's get a small cutting board ready for that. What? So many complaints from Doggo. And then a small bowl to mix the stuff in. So we'll be mixing in this little guy. 
And then I held on to my boning knife, cleaned it up. So we got that to still use. Yeah, very precarious. That's me. Yeah, no more sketchy than cleaning a fryer and then carrying the pot of hot oil outside. That's what Sammy used to have to do. <laughs> she is nicely firmed up. Check this out. Or yeah, carrying the wok full of a burning hot oil. Who would do that? Okay, there it is. All of our tenderloin pieces or filet mignon. I think I'm just gonna give this a whack to get it to come out. Just like that. And now, so we've sliced it all that way and then just stacked it up. So now we're gonna slice back across this way and then dice it to get the cubes. <laughs> you need to be able to vote more times. Okay, so maybe this is the wrong knife now cause it's not soft anymore. Just like to use the boning knife earlier cause it was soft. I'm just gonna go with my chef's knife wherever I stuck it under here. Okay, get that in there and then we're just gonna go, ooh, yeah, it is nice and firm on the outside, right down. Let those kind of fall in the stack because it'll be nice to cut through that afterwards too. Obviously the center is not completely firmed or frozen. I think as long as most of the outside is, it's much, more clean and easy to deal with. So I'll kind of just put that there like that. And this is something that is like quite enjoyable to eat on a hot day. So like perfect weather today to have this. I don't love to have beef tartare in like the middle of winter. It's kind of odd, <laughs> but to each their own, not saying it's a bad thing. Just saying it's not my favorite. Yeah, much more of a summertime style dish though, I would just say. And yeah, this filet had some crazy marbling in it. It's almost like a Wagyu tenderloin. It's how nice the fat is marbled throughout. There's also different ways to chop the tartare meat. I never mentioned anything. So if you know some other stuff, Mish, feel free to share that with everyone. The only thing I made very clear at the beginning of this stream is you absolutely cannot just go to the store and buy a pack of ground beef and make tartare from that. That's how you get very ill. And if you don't wanna chop it up at home, just ask the butcher to do it for you. Okay, I'm gonna move some of this over and then away we go. We got our bowl ready in front of us to pop it in there. Yeah, it's usually always made with filet because of how soft the meat is, Lauren. And like, it's pretty lean, doesn't have any connective tissue in the middle of the muscle either. And Nicole Sarah, thank you for the raid. How are you doing today? How was your stream? 
what did you get up to you thanks for bringing your community over we're in the midst of chopping our beef for our tartar this is a first for us on stream we just finished frying our fresh homemade potato chips turned out so yummy getting ready to plate up so you come in right at the perfect time thanks for the follow gamepad streaming what's cooking good looking <laughs> I would not recommend Wagyu Tartare because of the fat content, Lauren, is cold beef fat is kind of weird on the palate. Stream was good. You played some DVD. Can I cook for you? Yeah, if you are like in the area, for sure. I got to do this quick because as you can see, the bugs are like totally into what we're doing here with the raw meat. And I'm not having any of that today. Any DBD fans? That's Dead by Daylight, right? I think maybe we have a couple in here. Pretty sure, at least. I've never played it. I've seen it being played, and it looks really fun. I only really play, like, Animal Crossing or racing games. Quite the basic gamer here. The flies, yeah, are persistent. <laughs> the garnish for today, we're taking some pointer tips from Noma. <laughs> and we have ants and fried flies. Thanks for the follow, Sir Ike. Viking Oreo, you play DVD? Oh, they have, like, different characters on there, Eric? Cool. Holy. We did it. Hand chopped. This is a hand minced beef today. That's how you gotta sell it. Okay, get rid of this raw meat stuff. Give it a wash real quick. No cross-contamination allowed. Done with that knife. We'll get rid of this board. And then it's time for all the mix-ins which we have a couple right here that we prepped earlier on stream. Thank you for the follow Dajuna or Danjuna Deep. Welcome in. Okay, so first step, let's see. What do they say? Chop up your beef and put it in a bowl. When all the beef's been chopped, add in your shallot, caper, cornichon, parsley, anchovy, oil, garlic, salt, and pepper. Mix until combined. Oh, I gotta go grab the mayo real quick, BRB. Our homemade mayo. That gets added at the end. I think I'm gonna skip the ketchup step just because that is kind of weird. Otherwise, we'll follow pretty much to a T. Okay, sounds good, Nicole. Tell Sam you say hi. I for sure will. I think he's watching right now. Surprised he didn't say anything. Have a safe drive to Calgary as well. Yeah, should be a nice drive. Beauty weather today. Okay, this is our mayo that we made on stream earlier. Homemade. All by hand, too. We didn't even use the food processor. So then these are our 
accoutrements, I can say. I think that's the perfect amount that we prepped for the beef. So give that a tap. Get everything into there. Is it looking a bit dark? Light that up a touch more. Now, maybe not all of that parsley, that's quite a bit. About half of it, let's say. That'll add some nice freshness to the tartare as well as some color. So we got that. Say a touch of olive oil and some salt and pepper just to kind of like bring it all together. Boom. Couple cracks of black pepper. It's like Christmassy looking. <laughs> I suppose it is. I guess it would be a good uh, thing to serve at Christmas, hey? Beef and pepper is good, so don't hold back there. For all of that beef, let me start with a pinch like that. We can always add more, but we did also add some salty ingredients in there, the caper. Uh, the pickle can have a bit of salt on it. The anchovy paste is salty. Good ratio so far, though. And it's really nice that the meat was still frosty when we were cutting it up. It means it'll be proper cold when we do plate it up. It's not good to have warm beef tartare. I would have questions if that was served to me somewhere. Okay, next one I'm going to sneak in just before the mayo is just a touch of some Worcestershire sauce. And hello, YZ Petey. How are you doing? It's been a bit. So boom, that's really it. And yeah, drip all over the board. <laughs> Ask me how easy it is to pour from that bottle. Okay, so just a touch of that sneaky goodness. Cause I don't think we put any in the mayo. You can already see how this is changing in color and like consistency too. It looks really nice. Is the way that I chopped the meat, I tried to go almost as fine as the other stuff we added in. Yeah, question if served warm, exactly. And now they say just to add a drop of mayo to like kind of bring it together to form it onto the plate. So should not need much at all. I'm gonna go with like a tablespoon to start. Cause you can serve the tartare with more of that mayo we made. Just it's not supposed to be a mayo based thing. But it is good for a binder and because we made it ourselves it's quite flavorful too combines with the rest of those ingredients okay that's looking pretty dang good see how i'm kind of like mashing it together to see how it's forming that's really nice looking yeah pile on the chips and flour is in were we doing an egg I'm kind of torn, Eric. I mean, we can. This recipe doesn't have it. Let's have a bite. <laughs> I like my little reflection in the spoon there. That is really good. Mmm. Okay, I think that's better than uh, what I've had prepared for me before. I love all the ingredients in there. They go so well. Like not one ingredient is overpowering the other. 
you like get a little bit of shallot, a little bit of garlic, a bit of cornichon. Parsley does add a bit of freshness, so that's nice. Would never know that there's mayo inside of there. Love the drop of Worcestershire sauce. And the chips are pretty salty, or like I did season them well, so don't have to over season the tartare, right? I'm gonna have one more little bite just to make sure I'm happy, happy. And then the boys were saying for the photo, we should do the egg yolk. I can do that. I think that's good. Okay. Got our mayo there. Done with the salt and pep for now. Done with the oil. Here's our plate. Might need a hitch raid. Oh, we can do that. Didn't Dunjuna deep. It looks so good. Yeah. So the texture, it's basically just melts in your mouth, Lauren. The only like chewy or crunchy thing in there is the shallot and the pickles. Also bring that over into view because like, why not, right? And then I think for forming, we'll just put it back into one of these little things, put all that into there and go plop kind of off center there. Just gonna go grab the egg. Pop that there because we want that as cold as possible. Scat, if you bring me a quail egg right now, I'll put the quail egg on. Yeah, ostrich egg. <laughs> and yes, Cupy is Japanese mayo. High face plant. Okay, so pop this all into here. Pack it up nice and tight. And we should just be able to do a plop onto the plate. Like, I have seriously impressed myself making this up today. Totally transported me back to when I was in France. Last time I had beef tartare, I'm pretty sure I was in Lyon. And I went to like a very traditional French brasserie. Had this because I wanted something made table side. So this was the table side thing. And then I also got it with fried schmelz. Wow, cutting board cam decides to turn off today. That's interesting. I guess I'll point the fan that way. <laughs> what is this? This is new. I have the fan on, Sam. This is new. Yeah, that's a new one, Lauren. Emo egg is almost the same as ostrich egg. It is similar. Emo is a lot smaller. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, that'll be happy. When the cameras need a personal fan, don't care about the chef at all. The cameras though. <laughs> now that's service. Okay, just gonna scoop the rest. Oh, you're even fanning your video card, Eric? <laughs> and that can't even keep up. That's nuts. Okay, smooth it out. Of 
And we gotta commit to the plop. Yeah, get on the fan bike. Get on there. <laughs> Just like that. Dun 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 dun! And now, since we can kind of see the mark from the container, although it does kind of lend a nice hand to putting the egg yolk on, let's just give this a little press so the egg yolk will sit beautifully inside of there. This is like straight up, like an eight or nine ounce tartar portion. This is for sure for three people. <laughs> Massive, yeah puck of meat. I was waiting for that, Torino. Yeah, get the ketchup. Okay, so I'm just going to break this over the compost and bring the yolk over. Yeah, moose tartare formed from like a hockey puck. Very accurate, Lauren. And I mean, the hardest part of getting the yolk right now is not breaking it. Because we don't want the little white splooty things from the from the egg white so just kind of pinch those off but don't get into the yolk at all okay ready whoa rinse a -roo. and get the chips Get the chips. Hello, Dante. So good to see that you're alive. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so we have extra mayo. Should we just put that in a small little container on the side? So it could be good for dipping chips. I don't want it on the plate, I don't think. Because then we'll have to squinch some stuff. Gently gather it up. I think you would be down, Dante. A splooty? Yeah, sploot. Sploot it up. And we load the chips. No skimping. I shouldn't have to ask for extra chippies and have leftover tartare. Try and create a bit of height as well. And we also like to keep white space on the plate, so we'll leave that side a bit open. Maybe let these... Could be nice to let it look like it trickled down there. Okay. Mm. What the heck? Torino is not having a day today. Duder, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, photo time. And away we go. The only other thing I guess you can do is like just do a drizzle of olive oil around, but I don't really think it's necessary.
The time is now. Thank you for the follow cartooning with Caspel. Welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm going in. First thing we gotta do is just like break the yolk with the chip first. Choose a strong chip as well. Is the raw yolk gonna be cooked? No. I mean, if you're eating raw meat, you can't be weird about the yolk pyro. It kind of sauces the beef. Whoa, wasn't that strong of a chip. Okay, I'm going for the first bite. Look at the flies here. That's kind of satisfying, the volcano. Mmm. That's so good together. Blondie, get your butt over here. Help. It is a traditional French dish, if that makes sense. The tartare. Why it's raw, why we prepared it in this way. Man. The way the yolk just kind of coats the meat makes it melt in your mouth. Do another like messy photo here. Okay. Oh, sorry, yes. This is very activated content, that's right. R.I.P. Strum, just us. We used beef tenderloin torino, whole thing. We cleaned it up today, got our slices from it. Good to go. And it's so, so yummy. Okay, I'm gonna do a mayo dip on the chip real quick and then come back in. That's really good too. No way you're eating no raw meat. Like, is there a chance of salmonella in here? Because we went from a single muscle group, no pyro. But like I said, if you just go to the store and get a pack of ground beef, 100%. Never ever do that. Would not recommend. I think it's you, Nike, my dude. I don't see anything on my OBS here, but I could be wrong. I'm going to go bring the plate to Rando or see if he wants to have a few bites. You want to try some? Do you want me to bring it in or come out? What? Hey, hey, we got to bring him a little snack pack real quick. Hold on. He's not ready for it. You're getting the drops too? What the frick? I don't know, guys. Got the Wi-Fi thing right in front of me. The finest kind of meat you can buy, pretty much. Okay, you can have some bites, no rush. I just wanna see you try it. <laughs> Yeah, one thing, chat, if a chef brings you food, you can't be weird about them watching you eat it. That's like part of our job. Like you wouldn't think it would be good like that, but it's really satisfying. At this point, I mean, with all the acid and stuff, I guess it might be semi-cooked. But it's not chewy. It melts in your mouth. All the flavors with it are really nice. And for a textural guy, this isn't weird to me out at all. Yeah, like, so Rando doesn't like mushy things, chat. So this isn't weirding him out, which is a good thing. Because this is pretty mushy. And, like, even the meat sounds. The... <laughs> really good okay, good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, hey, I'll have a few more bites and I'll just pop it in the fridge so it stays fresh for us and we can munch off of it. 
Rando's first tartar. So awesome. Yeah, we clean the meat ourselves. One singular muscle group specific to the tenderloin or filet mignon. It's happening on your end too, Ellie. Are we better now? This is heckin' good. And yeah, doggo's like right here. Like, auntie, give me some of that. I'm the one who eats raw food. The chippies are a little delicate for this. Maybe you could have cut them just a bit thicker. That's the only thing I'm kind of going off of. Having one more bite. So yeah, the only thing we didn't really put in, oh no, almost lost it all in the mayo, was the ketchup. And like, I don't love overly sweet things with savory. Mmm. Hey, you can use a fork or just a small spoon, Sammy, it's true. Because you really shouldn't need more than this amount onto the chip. But yeah, you could easily do like the original recipe does baguette. Melba toast would be good. All of those options are good. You're a squeaker. Yeah, you. That is a tasty snack to have with a beverage of sort, of your choice, whether it's alcoholic or not, but that is very good with beer. I will tell you that. <laughs> not like this. Okay, friendos, that's our stream. Quick and easy Sunday, just like I promised. Look, barely any chippies left, so we'll get back on that train ASAP. Who are we gonna go raid? Astra, who are we gonna raid? Come here. Put your dog butt here. It's a good spot. It's good. I can't give you beef yet. You gotta wait. Just giving me the look. Just the look. Sammy wants a hitch raid. Oh yeah, it's his last day. Okay, so Hitch is finishing up his bike trip going across Canada. This is something he's done since the pandemic. Last day in Newfoundland, he's getting to St. John's. And then who knows what he's gonna get into after that, right? So let's go support Hitch. Haven't seen him in a bit. Make sure Trevor is a-okay. And also share just his amazing community with maybe some people here that are not aware of that type of stream here. Hitch on Twitch. <laughs> Hi, THC. <laughs> That's good. I like that one. Okay. Raid is set up, friendos. Wow. Three and a half hours to do that with homemade chips. We did not rush through any of that at all. Okay, so we are going to actually be live tomorrow. We added a Monday stream last week for menu planning, which was super enjoyable for everyone. Got amazing feedback. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, same time as always. 11 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Mountain is when we'll be live. If you wanna get some input of what we're cooking coming up this week, that would be a good time to do that. Otherwise, save your pots and pans and request them the other way. So yeah, Viking Oreo tomorrow. So Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, menu planning stream, maybe a bit of games, we'll see. Anonymous Cheerer, thank you for the thousand biddies going towards the food truck fund. 60% of the way already. Insane. All right. Thank you for all the love this weekend. Really appreciate all of that. I can't believe we're 60% through that. Like Annie said, that's $6,000, by the way, that you've supported us with. Hopefully we inspired you to create some deliciousness for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button, friends. If you need us at all, we'll be around on Discord and Twitch. Feel free to message. Let's go see Trev. Bye.